Hello and welcome to another Royal Society Publishing video podcast. Today I'm joined by Dr. Marion Biens, based at the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, to discuss her and her colleagues' paper, recently published in our open access journal, Open Biology. Their study focuses on the role of APC tumour suppressor in axon complex assembly and function and demonstrates the effects of mutational inactivation of the APC tumour suppressor, which almost invariably leads to colorectal cancer. Could you tell us about the significance of APC tumour suppressor and how this links to colorectal cancer? So most cases of colorectal cancer start with a mutation in the APC gene or adenomatous polyposis coli as it's called. And we know this gene because there are hereditary forms of the disease, various ones, one in particular called FAP, where, um, so if you're born with a mutation in this gene, by the age you are a teenager, you have thousands of polyps in your colon. And these are, of course, all benign. But if you don't remove them, then one of them will in inevitably progress to full-blown cancer by the age of about 40. So the, uh, the, the manifestation of the disease is really 100%, i.e. The, the, the link between mutation in the gene and the disease is very strong, one of the strongest known. So what is the role of axin in the wind signaling pathway? Well, axin and APC are both negative regulators of a signaling pathway called the wind signaling pathway. And this pathway signals through a molecule called beta-catenin. And beta-catenin basically relays the signal from the plasma membrane to the nucleus. And APC and axin bind to each other and form a complex to destroy this beta-catenin. So when they're active, then beta-catenin isn't there and this, the wind signaling pathway is off. So we call this complex the degradosome in our paper. Now, if, if wind binds to the plasma membrane, then another wind signaling protein comes into action called disheveled. And disheveled then binds to the axin complex and brings it to the plasma membrane to form a signalosome, and in the signalosome the complex is, is basically inactive. So it in, and because it inactivates it, then beta catenin builds up and it can get to the, to the nucleus where it switches on a whole program of transcription, which then in turn is important for cell fates. And we knew this signaling pathway because it was discovered originally in flies by genetics but it became very soon apparent that all animals have this pathway and it, it functions quite similarly. And the pathway also operates in humans. And actually, interestingly, in mammals, what was found is that the pathway also functions in adult tissues and in particular in their stem cell compartments. So, for example, in the colon, when signaling is required to maintain the stem cell compartments to, to, to maintain stem cells. So if we now have too much signaling activities, you have too many stem cells and that then produces a tumour. And that's of course slightly oversimplified, but that's how we think about this pathway in the APC and the development of colorectal cancer, at least at the moment. And what made you decide to focus on axin function? Well, we, stand, we understand the role of axin this, in this complex quite well. So axin um, is basically a scaffold protein and can bind on the one hand to beta catenin, and on the other hand it can also bind to a kinase called GSK3. And what this kinase does, it attaches a phosphate group to beta catenin, and that in itself is then a flag for destruction. But how APC helps this complex to function is really unclear, and this is particularly puzzling because people have done um, experiments all over the world where they uh, introduce axin into colon cancer cells, for example. And, or into APC mutant flies, 
and what you then discover is that axane can just uh, destroy beta catenin, so it can just do its job without APC. So APC doesn't seem to be necessary under these conditions. And how would you say your research differs from previous studies on the relationship between axin and APC function? Well, these experiments I just mentioned were all done in, the, in, in APC mutant cells where there is still a little bit of function, for example, in cancer cells. In fact, there, is no, there are no colon cancer cells which are null mutants which completely lack APC function. And the fly mutants were the same, they still had a bit of function. But uh, a few years ago, this group in America then discovered null mutants in flies. And that's when we decided to ask this question again and check again whether axin depends on APC and, and if so, how. What was the methodology used to study axin expression and function? Well, what we've done is we've used a fly strain which expresses a axin to which we've attached a green fluorescent protein, GFP, so we can monitor it and we can distinguish it from other proteins in the cell. So the first thing you want to do, of course, you want to make sure that this axin is functional. And we can do that because in flies there are a, uh, axin null mutants and these mutants are dead, of course, it's lethal. But you can look at the embryo or the early larva, and then you see that the larva has a completely naked cuticle. And we show this in our figure. And that actually means the pathway is completely on because axin function is lost. So that's the scenario basically in the cancer. So if we then put the axin GFP back into these cells, if we express it, then um, we can see that the cells become normal again. The larva looks much more normal. And in particular, that you can see these, these denticles on the cuticle. So the denticles are little structures, which are basically the feet of the larva in which it crawls around. But the important thing is if we see denticles, we know that axin functions and the axin complex functions. So uh, we've done this experiment now in APC null mutant cell uh, embryos and when you do this you see that they are still naked so axin doesn't produce a single denticles which really means it's completely inactive and that then allows us to conclude that um, APC is essential for axin to function. We used Drosophila APC null mutants to study in vivo function tests, but why flies? Well, the main advantage in flies is that we often have null mutants available so we can do a clean and definitive experiment. Like as I just mentioned, axin null mutants or APC null mutants. But the other real advantage of flies is that we can look at real tissues. Um, for example, epithelia, and epithelia are ro rather important in cancer because most solid tumours originate in epithelia, so we want to look at these. So if we now look, for example, at the embryonic epithelium, at this axin GFP, we see these very bright spots. Mm, you can see that in the figure in our paper. And these spots then or basically the axin complex, and we call this the gratosome in our paper, where there are thousands of axin molecules and other molecules such as APC. So we know these are the functional degratosomes. But that's in the wild type. Now if we look at the APC null mutants, we see that these um, uh, spots are just simply not there. And that tells us that APC is needed for axin to be able to assemble these, these uh, complexes. And that's particularly interesting because we know that axin has a domain called the Dix domain, which polymerizes, and, and that's required to assemble these complexes. So what really APC does is it somehow controls the polymerization of this Dix domain. Your analysis in Drosophila tissue allowed you to uncover an antagonistic role 
between APC and Dishevelled. Can you tell me a little bit more about this relationship? So the next surprise came when we looked in another epithelial tissue, namely in the larvae, the imaginal discs. And these discs are essentially the primordia from which the adult structures develop. For example, the wing disc gives rise to, to, to the wings. So when we looked at this, in the wild type cells, epithelium, again, we could see the bright spots. But then in the APC null mutant patches, which we can make in flies with genetic tricks, so in these APC null mutant cells, the bright spots weren't there, but they're all at the plasma membrane. And again, we can see this very clearly in our paper. As if it was mislocalized and as if, it, as if signaling was going on. And in fact, we know this depends on disheveled. So what happens here is that if there isn't any APC, axin then becomes prone to interact with disheveled. And interestingly, that too involves the DIX domain. Disheveled is the only other protein which has a DIX domain. And we know from our previous work that these two DIX domains can copolymerize. So we now know that APC uh, controls not only, on the one hand, it, it promotes the homodimerization of the DIX domains to make an axin complex. On the other hand, it stops axin from heteropolymerizing with disheveled, which would, of course, inactivate it. Can you extrapolate from your results in flies to APC mutant cancer cells? Well, flies are a remarkably good model when it comes to uh, looking at basic processes, for example, in in asking how proteins bind to each other, how they interact, how they behave, how they function. So in a, in a protein, really, its function depends all what it can bind to. And it turns out that the surfaces that protein use to bind to each other are often very, very similar between organisms, for example, between flies and humans. These surfaces have, the, the structure of them can be identical basically. So in that case we can be reasonably confident that when we see a result in flies, when we reach a conclusion, then we can extrapolate to the human protein. But we are of course aware that the cellular context in the fly is quite different from the, from, from the human. And that's why we often use another model system, namely the colon cancer cells where we can uh, ask the same questions again, just to make sure that the same thing applies in humans as in flies. And we've done that in our paper. And to our relief, we found conditions where we could see that the axin GFP actually also has problems assembling a degradosome in these um, human cancer cells. So we can be reasonably com confident that the conclusion we reached in our paper, namely that APC is essential for axin to assemble a degradosome, also applies for humans. And what would you say is the next step in your research? Well, we now have a framework how to think about it. We now know APC is essential for axin to function, but what we really don't know at all is the molecular details or the mechanism and this is quite interesting in its own right, because as I just mentioned, APC controls the behavior of this DIX domain, and the DIX domain itself is quite a remarkable domain and illustrates an important principle in signaling this uh, polymerization. So we would actually quite like to know how this DIX domain is controlled. And this is a quite intriguing question because ABC binds to one side, to, to, to one end of axin, the end terminus. And this binding we know is important in cancer because it is typically lost. So we know that this binding is important for tumor suppression, but it then controls the, the DIX domain, which is at the other end of axin. So it either does that at a distance, which is a bit strange or it involves other factors and we are quite interesting to to find these factors but there's really a more important 
issue here, a, a more important reason why we want to know the molecular details. And that is uh, to develop inhibitors of the pathway which stop it dead. At the moment, the, the wind signaling pathway is probably one of the few, if not the only one, where we don't have such an inhibitor. And these inhibitors are quite potent, quite powerful tools in research on the one hand, but of course they can also then ultimately de be developed further into therapeutic drugs. And that's at the moment really the holy grail in the field.